Hello everyone and welcome to Big Rock Moto. In today's video, we're gonna talk about separate versus integrated armor for adventure motorcycle riding. Now, this is a question that comes up so often. People are asking me, should you use a jacket with integrated armor or should you wear separate armor and then wear layers over and under that? And I think part of the reason for this discussion and this sort of, uh, not confusion, but sort of differences in opinion about this approach is because if you come from street riding, you wear gear, pants and jackets that is, that has armor built into it and that's just the way it is. However, if you come from a dirt bike background, you likely wear uh, armor uh, underneath like a jersey or a jacket and pant and things like that. So it's a very different approach. So here's the issue though. What if you're an adventure rider? Let's say, just for example, that uh, maybe you ride a KTM 890 Adventure R and you spend 50% of your time on the highway, on the asphalt, and 50% of your time off-road. So in that case, which kind of gear should you wear? Should you wear street-oriented gear with built-in armor uh, and the abrasion protection that comes with that gear? Or should you wear dirt bike gear, separate armor and jerseys and things like that? Since you're half the time on the road and half the time off-road, which setup should you choose? So I think that for those of us who are adventure riders and we are in love with our adventure bikes and that style of riding, it's really kind of split almost in two different directions. The one direction is a lot of gear manufacturers uh, are continuing to make the integrated armor type of gear. Uh, this could be your Revit suit, this could be your Climb suit, your MSR, your Alpine Stars, whatever it might be. There, there's a lot of great options there. And with a suit like that, you put it on and all the armor is built into the jans, uh, jacket and the pants. And you also have the abrasion protection, which sometimes can be certified or CE rated to different standards. So that way, if you do go sliding down the asphalt, you have that. The other kind of direction this has gone is companies like Moscow Moto have said, look, we believe in a separate armor because of better temperature control, being able to take layers and jackets and things off and on, depending on the terrain you're riding in, the speed you're riding at, and the temperature outside, and also whether it's raining or not. So really, I just wanna talk about the pros and cons of these two different approaches. There's no winner, there, there's no clear superior approach. It really depends on the kind of riding that you do. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a multitude of setups uh, going in both directions. So I have a lot of the integrated armor gear and I have a lot of the separate armor gear as well. So let's talk through the pros and cons and how you might choose uh, to outfit yourself for your next adventure ride. All right, let's start with the separate armor. So how this setup works is that you're gonna wear some kind of a next to skin base layer. At least I recommend that to just to help control moisture, be more comfortable. Then over that, you're going to put either a thermal layer or a mid layer, or you might just directly then put the armor over that, that base layer depending on the temperature. And then over the armor, you're gonna put some sort of a riding jacket and a riding pant. Okay, so that's basically how that works. And then we know how the integrated armor suits work. You basically put on your base layers or mid layers and you throw the suit over it and you're good to go. And oftentimes, you know, you might have a mesh suit that's breathable, you might have a waterproof suit, you might have uh, a more configurable suit with a lot of zippers and things like that, but it doesn't really matter. So let's talk about the pros of the separate armor setup, the more dirt bike oriented setup, or maybe using something like Moscow Moto riding gear combined with armor. One of the big pros to the separate armor is that when you wear that pressure suit, that armor suit, the armor fits tight and close to your body. It's compressed up against your body. At least it should be if it's fitting right. That's the way it's designed. The advantage of that is that when you do go flying, when you go impacting something, well, God forbid, but I mean, off-road riding, this is what happens. You, you have an impact. The armor is much less likely to shift and move because it's tighter against your body. Another pro to wearing this kind of armor is that you tend to get better coverage. So I have upper body uh, armor suits that have full chest armor, full back armor. They have all pads everywhere. As opposed to, you know, throwing on your adventure jacket and, you know, you're gonna have elbow, shoulder, a back pad, usually, uh, and you're probably not gonna have chest armor or any kind of armor on the side. So you tend to get better coverage with the separate armor systems, depending on what you decide to go with. Now another huge pro and maybe one of the largest reasons you would choose to use separate armor is that you can adapt your gear during your ride for different temperatures and different riding speeds. 
So if you've ever been at slow speed off-road in a hot desert wearing a fully armored up waterproof riding suit, you know that feeling of just overheating and not being able to cool your body because even though those suits have vents in them, those vents really only function above about 30, 35 miles an hour. And oftentimes you're either sitting still or going very slow and you're just gonna overheat no matter how good the vents are in that suit. Well, when you're wearing a separate armor setup, you can take the jacket off, no matter what jacket it is, roll it up, stow it in your luggage or strap it on the back of your bike, and then you're just wearing a jersey and armor and you have much better airflow, but you still have that impact protection that you need for off-road riding. And in today's world, we have more advanced jerseys, lightweight layers that, that give you a little bit of abrasion a protection for taking slides on gravel roads and things like that. This would be something like the Moscow Moto Workhorse jersey, which I'm a huge fan of myself. All right, so what are the downsides, potential downsides of using these separate armor systems? The first one can be, sometimes they're not quite as comfortable. It depends on how good a quality your gear is and how good it fits. But you kind of end up sometimes having sort of more layers, just more number of layers and a little bit more bulk in some situations. Plus that armor sometimes can be a little bit less comfortable. But I don't really find that to be the case so much with my particular gear because I've experimented and found different, different types of armor that I like. Another downside to using the separate armor is that it's a little bit more work to get dressed and go out and get ready to go out for your ride uh, because you have just more to do. You've got to put on a base layer, then you've got to put that armor on. You've got to consider whether you need some sort of a mid layer for, uh, for cold temperatures. And then you've got to figure out, do I need a layer over that for abrasion resistance on the highway or for water resistance if it's raining or snowing or anything like that. So there's a bit more work involved in the getting dressed and getting ready to go riding with that separate armor setup. Another potential downside that I kind of find with the separate armor is that it makes that mid-layer situation a little bit trickier. So what I find is you really, let's say you're riding on your adventure ride and it's kind of cold, you're getting colder, you want to put in some sort of a mid-layer. Um, and even with the advanced modern mid-layers we have today, you really need to take the armor off. So you've got to take off your jacket, uh, take off your jersey, take off your armor, that's three things already, then put that mid-layer underneath the armor, get the armor back on, zipped up, all ready to go, then put your jersey back on, potentially if you're using a jersey, uh, and then put your jacket back over that. So that's a bit more steps than simply peeling off the, the outer jacket of your adventure riding suit with integrated armor, putting in a mid-layer, zipping back the jacket back up, and you're good to go. So there's a downside there. Another potential downside of the separate armor setup is let's say that you don't take with you some sort of abrasion resistant outer layer. Uh, and this is common with folks who come from the dirt bike world. So you'll end up riding down the highway sometimes for hundreds of miles with no significant abrasion protection. So road riding suits and adventure riding suits, um, they will have abrasion resistance that's often certified. So if, you know, I mean, I'll tell you a story. I went sliding down the highway once a long time ago and I was in street bike gear and I slid so far that it still wore through that Cordura, that reinforced layers, uh, through some of the armor and, and did uh, give me road rash. Not terrible because uh, I didn't slide too, too far, but it was bad enough. So I was just thinking, you know, had I been wearing like a dirt bike jersey, it would have gone right through that and it probably would have really been some pretty severe road rash not having that abrasion layer to have to get through. Now there are workarounds to this. So Moscow Moto, for instance, has their basilisk suit and they've got things like their Kiger pant. These outer layers have a more significant abrasion resistance with things like super fabric and things like that that you can use. But if you're just using a very lightweight off-road type jacket or jersey, you really don't have protection if you were to go sliding down the highway, God forbid. And that is something that could be a major downside. All right, let's switch over to the integrated armor suit. So this would be something like some of my favorite suits like the Klein Baja, the MSR Explorer, uh, the Revit Cayenne Pro, the Revit Sand 4, um, anything like this Alpen Stars Bogota Pro, whatever. You get the idea. It could be street gear, it could be adventure specific gear, um, but it's gear that has an abrasion resistant outer layer and has integrated armor pockets. So the pros to the setup. The pro is that, the pros are, I should say, uh, number one is convenience. You simply put on a base layer, put the suit on, zip it up, and go right away. That's it. You don't have that separate armor layer to deal with and the potential mid-layers and things like that. 
The other real advantage to this is the abrasion resistance that you often have. So I have many of my suits, my integrated armor adventure suits are either CE AA or CE AAA rated for abrasion and impact. This gives me a great deal of security were I to have an accident on the highway at high speed and go sliding, uh, that I would have a great deal of abrasion resistance that would prevent that really, really terrible road rash from happening or hopefully make it a lot less worse. And another pro of this kind of suit, uh, and we kind of already touched on this, it's a little bit easier to layer. So I have thin windbreaker layers that I can put on under a mesh suit. One of my favorites is the Climb Zephyr wind jacket. I can put it on under my Baja S4 jacket and I get a nice windbreaker layer. Super easy to do. Just take the jacket off, put the wind liner in, zip the jacket back up, I'm good to go. I can use layers over the jacket so I can wear like my Climb Enduro S4 or any rain jacket, I suppose, over something like that, that Baja jacket to provide that, that, uh, that exterior waterproofing and windproofing if that's something I want. So it can be a little bit easier to, to play with the layers and things like that. It can make packing for your trip a little bit simpler sometimes, but, but not always. All right, so there have to be some downsides to these integrated armor suits. Well, there absolutely are. There's some pretty major ones that you have to consider. One is that, and we already talked about the opposite of this in the integrated armor section, the downside is that the armor in the integrated uh, armor suit uh, will often not fit tight to your body because it's, it's attached to the jacket. So let's get that clear. The armor is attached to the jacket and pants and not to your body. And depending on how loose those garments fit you, uh, and this is one argument for maybe a little bit of a tighter fit sometimes, is that in an, in an impact, that armor can shift and move around and not protect you in the way that you think it would. Uh, this can be a major issue. I mean, I've even had armor get dislodged just putting on a jacket. So if it's getting dislodged and mess up just putting the jacket on, what's gonna happen in an accident? So that is a major downside, potentially, of these suits. The other huge downside of wearing this type of gear, especially true for if you're doing a lot of off-roading, is that the suit is going to be hotter in general. So because you're, you have to wear that jacket and pant to have the armor and to have that abrasion protection, it can be hotter. Now, you can negate this by wearing like a fully mesh suit, which I tend to use about nine months of the year, and there's plenty of good options there, and that gives you pretty good ventilation. But still, at lower speeds, especially off-road and warmer temperatures, where the vents aren't as effective, having that heavy, bulky jacket and pan on with all the integrated armor uh, is hotter. Plus, these suits have a mesh internal liner to help hold that armor in, and that also adds to kind of the hot, sticky feeling of these, even to some of the mesh suits. So if you tend to run hot and you tend to ride off-road a lot, you, you probably should be looking more towards that separate armor setup. The other downside of this, and we kind of just talked about this, but you have a bit less flexibility in terms of temperature adaptability and weather adaptability. So let's say, like when I did the Nevada BDR thing recently, which we didn't even finish that ride, but that's a whole nother story, you can watch that video. I was wearing the uh, Klein Badlands A3 Pro. It's an amazing suit, you know, it's got all these vents, it's CE AAA rated, it's got Gore-Tex Pro shell. But the problem was that the first three days, it wasn't raining at all, it was hot. And so during that, during that time, the best I could do would be kind of open the zippers, get the vents flowing. I, could, I was wetting, constantly wetting down my jersey uh, inside the jacket to, to try to just get relief from the heat. But I was really dying in that thing. It was way too hot for those conditions. Now, on the last day, it was raining and cold, and I, I did appreciate having it, but I suffered for most of the time. So my point is that Let's say you're on the trail, you don't really have the option to just take the jacket off because then all you're wearing is a thin base layer jersey and you have no protection of any kind. So that is a huge downside of wearing a jacket with integrated armor. Now there are workarounds, like I said. Uh, my personal choice uh, that I've found is that I like to use something, of a ventilated, fully mesh riding, adventure riding suit. My favorite is the Baja S4 from Climb. The Revit makes some good ones, or Alpenstars has good stuff too. But uh, that's really cool because I can layer under it, I can layer over it. When I'm on the highway, I've got that abrasion protection. When I'm off-road, I'm typically cool enough with the mesh. So that's a setup that I really like and something that you should really check out. You've also got something like the Climb Marrakesh, which I recently reviewed, which is an awesome, awesome setup. All right, so how do you decide which setup is for you? I mean, the ultimate answer is if you're not on a strict budget, you really should have both setups because depending on the type of ride you're gonna do, one could be better than the other. It's really hard if you have to choose only one setup because that constrains things a lot more. So here's what I would say if that, if that describes you or, or here's how to choose for your next ride. 
I, I kind of feel like if your writing is, and be honest about this, be honest about the percentage, right? If your writing is more than 50% off-road, like off-payment, I'd probably be definitely going towards that separate armor setup for the temperature adaptability, you know, it's cooler, you don't need to wear the rain suit, uh, you know, when it's not raining. That's, that's the other thing I can get on a soapbox about this. But motorcycling is one of the only sports where we're crazy enough or dumb enough sometimes to wear hot, sweaty rain gear on a perfectly sunny, blue sky day when it's warm. That doesn't make any sense. Um, anyway, I don't, I don't want to get on that. So, but anyway, I, I'd say, yeah, if you're spending more than 50% of your time off-road, the separate armor setup with layers can be a good idea. If you're spending more than 50% of your time on the road, let's say you're an 80% highway rider, 20%, you know, dirt roads, I would probably steer you towards the integrated armor setup. Uh, just because you've always got that abrasion protection, you know you can count on, assuming you invest in a good quality suit. And then off-road, you know, you, you, won't, you won't be spending too much time off-road. You can probably live with some of the, the compromises there. Plus, you get that convenience factor. Of when you go into a restaurant and you're on a tour or whatever, you just take that jacket off and you're down to your jersey or your base layer. So the convenience and the comfort factor can be a big deal. So those would be my general guidelines. But could you, as a road rider, as a mostly road adventure rider, use in a separate armor setup? Absolutely. With stuff like that Moscow Moto has, uh, with all their different setups, uh, which I have a separate video uh, launching pretty much the same time as this. You can check that out. They have stuff that will work for that. Um, on the other hand, could you use integrated armor suits uh, for you know all, mostly all off-road riding? The answer is yes, and Climb has you covered with something like the Baja S4. So I hope this video was useful. If you want to check out some of my favorite gear, I'll have that linked below, things I recommend in all the different categories. Uh, please support Big Rock Moto by using my affiliate links when you're shopping. If you have any questions, put that down below. Ride safe, and I'll see you out there.